Hey YouTube, I'm back with another video. Today we're going to be looking at uh, the ARC Control Center. We're going to be evaluating the features that it ships with on launch day. And then we're going to compare it with a more mature graphics platform, that being Radeon and Radeon Settings. We're going to look at uh, what, what needs to be added to the Control Center to achieve feature parity with the competition. Um, but so just to show the test setup, what I have here, so I have two identical monitors. These are 24 inch 1440p, 144 hertz Aegon monitors. I have featured these on the channel many times before. These are probably my go-to when it comes to benchmarking anything at 1440p, high refresh rate. So on the left side we have, of course, the Intel, the elusive, I should say, Intel Arc A770. This is the 16 gigabyte with all its RGB greatness. It's paired up with an AMD Ryzen 5800X with 64 gigabytes of memory. On an ASUS Crosshair Hero, you can see it there uh, in the back. Uh, and then that's going to be the main uh, ARC system that we're going to be evaluating. And then on the right side we have a uh, RX 6700 XT which we're going to be comparing it to. Because I have been saying uh, for over a year now that I believed that the A770's true rival would be this graphics card here uh, and then we're going to be pairing this up with a Threadripper this is an X399 2950X so this is my old HEDT platform that uh, has since been replaced by the Ryzen 7000 so I'm, I'm now running a 7950X but I am using this for just as an extra PC just to test here um, so I can do these sort of comparisons uh, we're not doing any kind of benchmarking in this video. This is going to be strictly feature parity, kind of looking at what you get out of the box and where I think Intel needs to improve in terms of the features that are available to the user in the control panel itself. So let's start off, let's look at control panel. So to open up the ARC control planner, uh, panel, assuming you have the drivers installed, you just right click on the desktop and then you can click on, we'll zoom in, where it says Intel Arc Control. You just click on that and then it brings up this overlay. It's pretty much instantaneous, um, but I would like to see an actual standalone application window because what this is, is it's strictly an overlay uh, and it, like you can't move this window. I can't resize the window. Uh, I can't, like if I click anywhere off, like for example, if I click in the background, like I just click here on the desktop, the overlay immediately disappears so I have to reopen it so that's really annoying I would really really prefer that this is a standalone application window as opposed to a overlay this looks exactly the same when you're in game and as far as I know there's no way to disable the overlay like if you don't want to use it in game or just globally in general um, because if you were to do that then there would be no way to open up the the our control center at all so if we go to, I think the first page it would default to is the game on drivers or the, the drivers page. So you can check here. I'm, I'm using the latest driver, which was the one that was available for download at launch. For those wondering, I will put this in the video description below. So this is the current driver that we're testing as of filming. Uh, and then you get, it's pretty bare bones actually. So uh, you get the game tab. You know, this kind of shows, like, this is very similar to what you see in NVIDIA GeForce Experience um, or in Radeon settings. The reason why I'm comparing this with Radeon and not GeForce is because the problem with GeForce is you have to download two, you, you basically have to install the NVIDIA control panel, which is, comes with the driver, and then you also have to install GeForce Experience, which is a standalone application, uh, which I personally don't like to use. It requires a login, and it's the only way you gain access to shadow play and a lot of the other features like rtx voice and that sort of thing um, whereas with radeon you don't have to do any of that you just download the driver install that and everything is there no login necessary so i think that radeon actually is better than geforce from a user usability standpoint so that's kind of why we're comparing with radeon but anyway so if we look at this you have the performance tab uh, again there's no way to maximize this so i can't like i'm stuck with the scroll like the scroll buttons here, but this kind of shows you, you know, what you would find in things like GPU Z uh, or even just Task Manager. So CPU activity, memory utilization, the GPU voltage. That's kind of useful. 
GPU clock, GPU power. So these are these are good metrics to see. Uh, one thing that's okay, the fan speed is here at the bottom. I would like this to be further up. Uh, as far as I know, there's no way to customize it. Oh wait, no. Looks like there is a way to customize it, but there's no way to move things up. Like I would have to disable some of these if I wanted just to see the fan RPM on the the top row here. So I don't really like that, um, but at least they give you a lot of useful info um, within the driver UI so that you don't have to rely on third-party tools. So that's always nice. So performance tuning, if you go to configure. So here is where you can do overclocking. What, what surprises me is that it actually just doesn't warn you that overclocking is not supported and uh, it's not covered under warranty for any damage that might incur from doing this. But that's really interesting because AMD does have a, uh, a warning that you have to accept or decline if you want to gain access to these settings. Um, so, yeah, so you can adjust the, you know, the performance boost. Okay, here it goes. Here we go. So it's weird. You start messing with the settings and then it actually cautions you. So here it says Intel processors are intended to be operated only within their system. So basically, this is the same thing that you would see on Radeon. The only difference is Radeon starts with this, whereas Intel actually doesn't show you that until you start changing the settings. Okay, we're just going to cancel because we're not going to do any overclocking in this video. We're just going to show features and what's what's kind of lacking here or what's ideal or what needs to be added we'll put it that way so performance tuning so you can do that in-game overlay i have it off oh okay so the overlay so this in-game overlay is actually the what you see in the top right of the screen over here so if i were to click off that goes away if i click on that shows that stuff right there and that's basically an overlay that always stays on top of the screen so if you fire up a game or like a full screen game or whatever that overlay will stay up in the top right but i would like this that's fine but i would like just the overall ui for the control center to not be an overlay itself the studio settings uh they do seem to have a uh, quite a number of settings here that are pretty good so you can go you can either broadcast and then they've got the advanced settings here on the right hand side and if we take a look at these you can specify the resolution I think it maxes out at what the monitor supports so in this case this monitor is a 1440p monitor it incorrectly labels that as UHD though instead of QHD UHD is actually 4k but that's whatever that's just a labeling bug so frame rate you can do 30 or 60 uh, bit rate can be adjusted Audio, audio volume, microphone volume, uh, so AI enhanced solution. So this one they do have uh, something called SharpStream, an AI enhanced solution that intelligently identifies and sharpens CNC regions. Well, in, okay, so that's cool. Enable capture of audio, auto game. So I'm not really going to bother with those right now. But uh, one thing though, I do want to point out is the AV1. Because this is something that was touted big time. So if we go to capture. So they, they don't let you broadcast yet in AV1. Uh, so because I don't know if the Twitch or the YouTube or the streaming services ingest servers support AV1 officially yet. So that's probably why that's not a thing. Um, but you can capture in AV1. And I'll show that here. So, so you've got, you know, you have to manually... Specify the file location and then the file name and which which uh, monitor I guess so that's going to be the only one available. Microphone, you know, camera mode. You can either do okay. So it's kind of like AMD's one because AMD and I guess Nvidia's recording is very similar in their tool. But if you go to advanced settings now, here's what's interesting. So on the right hand side, we now have. You know, resolution, again, it's still uh, these, but now here we have the codec. So now you have AV1. So you have AV1, HEVC, HEVC, or AV1. So there it is. So you, so as a release, you can, you can uh, record gameplay footage in AV1. So that's really cool. So the top, you have, you know, notifications. You have the menu customization which there's no way to 
change it so it's not an overlay so again I keep on harping on the same thing but it's pretty much bare bones like there's this is this this feels like there's uh, stuff for like OBS or XSplit just kind of taken from what those do in the studio but you know at the end of the day like that's nice but it would be nice to have the actual uh, things that you would want to be able to change in your graphics control center and I'm going to illustrate that now by looking at Radeon settings so I did a video on how to use Radeon settings recently but in this video we're just going to kind of show what is different or what's lacking what, what needs to be in Intel's ARC control center so again you right click you click Radeon settings it opens up here it just kind of shows on the home page last play games I don't really play any games on this computer so just kind of ignore this but we will show like a side by side just just on the topic of games itself if you click on a game uh, you can see here you can see how I can move first of all I can move this around I can full screen it if I wanted I will just kind of full screen it um, but if we dive right in like the cool thing is you gain you have metrics on the performance grade uh, you can tune game performance that would be more like overclocking but what we want to look at here is this so graphics profile you know, you can do RSR if you wanted. So this game, if it supports RSR, which is Radeon Super Resolution, Radeon Chill. So right here, if we enable this, you can specify a minimum frame rate cap, a maximum frame rate cap. If you set them the same, that effectively functions as a frame rate limiter using Radeon Chill. So that's really nice. You can't do any of these sort of things uh, with Arc today. Uh, Radeon image sharpening. So these are just kind of like the features that are similar to what NVIDIA offers as well. But see, Intel does have smooth sync and, and things like that. But, you know, that's nice to have. But, I mean, where's my frame rate cap? Like, I, I want frame rate caps, especially for running games that don't need to be running above 60. Uh, and don't have proper built-in frame limiters in the game engine itself. So here's where you would toggle free sync. You know, basically all these type of things are, are easy to find. You can enable them on a per game level, like what we're doing here, or you can actually tune them globally. So if you click on settings in the top right up there, you can actually go to graphics and then set the settings globally. Like if you wanted to do frame rate target control or, or you know, anti-lag, which is basically like NVIDIA Reflex X, but this has been around longer. You know, these sort of things, 10-bit pixel format, OpenGL, triple buffering, tessellation. You can specify tessellation limits. Can't do any of that in Intel's ARC control center right now. Um, and then you have things for like legacy DX9, things that are specific to DX11 and 12. Uh, but the main thing that is really missing is this tab. So the display tab itself is completely absent from the ARC control center, which this is, in my mind, this should be a severity one. This should be a priority one. They need to get this stuff in here immediately. They don't have, as far as I know, I looked everywhere for it, but they do not have a way to specify the color depth of the monitor. So this is something that I mentioned in my first impressions video. There's no way, if you have a monitor, like for example, we have this Agon. This only does eight 8 BPC, but you can set it to 6. Uh, prime example, I have a Sony, uh, I just accidentally clicked on that, but anyway, I have a Sony InZone, which is 10 BPC capable, but for some reason with Intel, because there's no way to specify that in the driver control center, my Sony monitor is stuck running at 8 BPC when paired up with ARC, and there's no way to adjust it. Uh, you know, the AMD card automatically sets it to 10, uh, but if it didn't, I could manually set it here. So the fact that that feature is missing is a head scratcher. It's like really, really weird. And then of course, here you can specify the pixel format. So here we have the full range RGB. You can do 444, YCB, CR, you know, 4 or, four, or Chroma. I mean, you can do all that stuff there. You can't do any of this in Intel's driver yet. Uh, display color enhancement. You know, there's, I don't use that, but, you know, that might be something that's worth looking into. Display spec, so it does have, you know, your resolution, the timings, the polarity, the sync. So this is the sort of stuff, if you're using custom uh, resolution editors, uh, you you might want to have 
access to this sort of these sort of statistics and metrics off of your display so you kind of know what it's capable of you know what's the display link running the free sync range is shown here that's supported by the display so all of this stuff is in here intel's driver doesn't really show any of this um, and this is not hating on intel this is kind of showing what needs to be added uh, for the user experience to be like a fully featured product so it doesn't feel like it's some kind of beta product um, so I hope someone from Intel's watching this because you know this is this is the sort of stuff that if I was developing this early on I would have made sure that the display controls would have been in here rather than trying to focus on studio and game capture and that stuff because those are the things that are edge cases and there's also a lot of software that People will use like OBS, XSplit, just as two examples, but people are gonna go to their third-party software and probably use those things as opposed to the actual driver like this. But it is nice to have that feature within the control center. Let's see like overrides, custom resolutions. These sort of things aren't in the driver yet, or at least they're not, they're not exposed to the user. And then you have the video tabs, you can change the profiles. I mean, that's, that's nice to have. It's not really, this is not really 100% necessary. You know, things like um, surround or uh, Ifinity. I, I don't know if anyone really uses those features anymore. So I guess the key takeaway here is in the current state, the ARC control center has focused on things that are not essential uh, for using the PC. I feel like they focus on a lot of these optional nice to haves. Um, and they've kind of forgotten about the core essentials that the driver probably should have came with from day one. But anyway, that's all I wanted to show. Hopefully somebody from Intel's driver team sees this feedback because, you know, it's, it is something that I do want to see them improve. And as an early adopter, you know, I was, or I went into this knowing that this would have a lot of issues. I just didn't know that it would feel this half baked. So I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the content on this video, and if you're still wanting to get ARC, I totally understand why, because even if I didn't have ARC, and if I watched this video, I still want to get this GPU. It's still really cool to play around with, and it's interesting to see something uh, in a first generation kind of grow and then get better and better. So hopefully uh, it does, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Thanks.